We all know that some of Minecraft's oldest prisons are obsolete. They've been escaped time and time again, but I don't think that's impressive. I don't think that's good enough. I'm more interested in how fast it can be done. I have chosen eight OG Minecraft prisons with many more to come. I bet I can break in and free a prisoner from every single one of these prisons in less than a minute each. Not only can no prison stop me, but no prison will even have a chance to react before me and the prisoner are long gone. As we're beginning, let me remind you I'm only escaping 8 prisons in this video, but I will make more to come, and I'd like you to recommend which prisons you would like me to escape next. First up, we have the famous Poseidon's Vault. If this prison were made today, everyone would laugh at it. If the thing is barely 50 blocks wide, it has the prisoner and visitor go through the same hallways as the guards. The walls are made out of sea lanterns, and the cell is this close to the entrance portal. I'm going to be taking advantage of this fact in my escape. As the Poseidon's Vault video mentions, the closest guard to me will stay behind this glass door on the other side of a lava pit. Which is convenient, because it keeps the guards out of the way of my run. First, I'm going to use respawn anchors to destroy this dispenser, and then to destroy the block behind it. After that, I can use lava to destroy the portal, and pearl into the sea lantern walls. From this point, it should only take one more respawn anchor to get to the cell, and one respawn anchor to get in the cell. After that, I just have to block the spawn and kill myself and the prisoner. And that should be the run. My goal for this run is to get less than 20 seconds. Let's see how it goes. This prison is Crea Vault. Ever heard of it? Neither have I. And honestly, it's kind of embarrassing. The cell itself kills you every few minutes by retracting blocks where you spawn, meaning your spawn point is obstructed every 20 seconds or so. So you could literally escape this by getting up, making a sandwich, coming back, and clicking respawn, but we're not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to start the time once again as I enter the portal. I'm gonna drop down below and we're gonna see another fault of Crea Vault. Someone was too lazy to fill in the rest of the prison. This makes the longest part of the escape a quick pearl from place to place until I get to the cell, place a respawn anchor here, and destroy the bed instantly. Since I can assume that a prisoner could have killed their self in the time I got here, I can also assume they could have been notified to click respawn after I say that I've destroyed the bed. My goal for this run is to get a time faster than Poseidon's Vault. Shouldn't be too hard, let's begin. Our next prison is the first of Mining Blob. This is the fortress, and honestly, it's equally as embarrassing as Crea Vault. At first, I thought I'd have to find some long and complicated route from the portal to the cell, which may have taken a lot of time, but then I realized that the lower half of this prison isn't protected by obsidian at all. You can use respawn anchors to mine through almost instantly, and you're already in the cell room. From here, I can just teleport into the cell with some lucky course fruit, and respawn anchor the prisoner. My goal for this run is also just to get less than 20 seconds. This is Front's first prison, Chitin's Vault. There's not much I can say about it, it's pretty much like the last two. Let's get through it quick so we can move on to the cooler prison. First I'm going to pearl onto this wall, mine three blocks, pearl into the prison, and place a lever. That's my escape. Now, because there's lava right in front of the cell, I can once again assume that the player can kill their self while I'm breaking into the prison. If I obstruct their bed just before they respawn, the prisoner will be free. So all I have to do is activate this piston, which is what the lever does. It might be a lot to ask, but I think I can get sub 10 on this run. Let's see. Now 
Now, these were all meh prisons. They were these prison YouTubers' first attempts at making prison. The next four prisons will be their second attempts. So since we started with Poseidon's Vault, let us proceed with Hades' Vault. Now, this is version 8 of Hades' Vault, because that is the version that is currently linked in the description of the Hades' Vault video. I hadn't realized that later versions exist, so I'll be ignoring them, but I don't really care because they're nothing like what's displayed in the video, and it's not like there's any judge. I can do any version of Hades' Vault I'd like. If you want to see me escape the modern version of Hades' Vault, I could do that, but not for this video. Now, this room in front of me is designed so that withers cannot be spawned without carpets being broken. Problem is, I don't care if carpets are broken. What are the guards gonna do? Drop through this chute from above? Come through this gate at the entrance? All walled up now. After I summon this wither, it's just a straight path to the cell, except no, because there's this warden room right next to the cell between the portal and the cell, and I need to make sure to avoid this room, otherwise it's possible for a warden to come in and sabotage my escape attempt. And since I'm doing these all in single player, I can't risk the possibility of guards intervening. As a reminder, I've already blocked off the other entrances they can take. All I have to do is get around that composter glitch and then block off the respawn point and the prisoner will have already drowned so I don't need to kill them. Let's see how this run goes. Now this was very unfortunate, because despite my best efforts, I couldn't manage to get this to get sub one minute. But in my frustration, as I watch Hades' vault burn to the ground, I turn around to see its polar opposite, Glacier's Orb by Creovite. First of all, this entire first room is completely covered in water, meaning some good Death Strider boots and a Riptide Trident will make this run go significantly faster. I notice there's a door that goes straight to the guard room that requires a keycard. Fortunately, lazy little Creovite decided not to add books to the rest of this hopper, meaning technically if I drop in a snowball with the right numbers, which you could get in survival, I could open the door automatically. Listen, okay, if I'm speedrunning, breaking into these prisons, clearly I already know the entire layout perfectly. I know every hallway, I know the direction of every room. It's not like I'm not going to know what's inside one of these dispensers. You already have the pre-existing knowledge that I downloaded the map before I escaped it, so it's not impossible to know the combination. That being said, this doesn't necessarily make it valid. That comes down to the opinion of the creator, but for the sake of a speedrun, I don't see any difference. After this, it's a quick flyby with my trident, hide in this hallway where the guards can't get to me, and wither straight to the cell room. This one, I'm confident I can get in under a minute. Let's see how it goes. I'll leave this wither alone in here and move on to the obelisk. 
Mining Blob's second prison. And now when I look at this, the first tower going to the block limit, so impressive looking, it's not much better. We're not even going to mention that the entire inside of the prison isn't even filled in, because the cell itself is big enough to put a portal in. So, uh... Well, pretty impressive time compared to the last two prisons I escaped. Better luck next time, Blob. I'll escape another one of your prisons in the next video. But first, we have one more left from front once again, and this is a huge upgrade from Chitin's vault. This is Odysseus's vault. Yes, it's small and it's so easy to wither in from the side, which I won't do, but it's also just very compact and actually good at its kill checks. Solo prisoner most definitely couldn't take out alone, but we're not doing this solo. I'm gonna break in from the portal entrance, which is on the opposite side of the prison as the cell. However, I still think I can get there faster than mining in with a wither, especially because if you use a wither, you have a chance of guards coming around from the outside and sabotaging with your escape. First, I enter this room and splash invisibility on myself. I'll eat a gapple and then start purling up on this side. As good as Odysseus's vault is, it puts the main guard room right above the entrance. It doesn't matter if the guard is in the composter or from above, it will be almost impossible to detect where I'm coming from, and I only stay in this room for a fraction of a second. After this, I'll immediately enter the hallway and block it off. From here, I can hotwire the guard lock by blowing up the dispenser and putting a non-stackable item in the hopper. Immediately, this opens the doors and I have access to the entire guard area. The next guard lock I have to get through is right here, and if I blow up the dispenser, I actually destroy the pistons that would open up my door. However, this doesn't matter too much to me because I don't need the blocks to retract. I can pearl glitch through these diagonal areas. But just before I do, I'm going to take one key card with me for one final lock. When I drop down into this final room, to access the bed, you'll need one of these books. I pull this lever and the lever behind me and the bed opens up. If you do this escape at night, you can sleep in the bed, awaken the cell and destroy the prisoner. Let's see if I can get a time below 45 seconds. And like that, the first eight prisons are down, and only one of them took more than a minute. 